Hi guys, welcome to my latest Elite Dangerous video. I've had a request from one of my friends, Commander Crema Trico. They've just recently got the game and they're looking for some tips how to make money. Obviously he's aware that you can make a lot of money from things like mining and cargo running missions. Things which would be hard to do in a Sidewinder, but there are still some options. Warning, taking eight damage. First thing I have to do is get myself back to the starting conditions of the game. I've managed to get rid of most of my credits by buying ships and buying modules and putting them into storage. I've bought myself a shiny new Sidewinder which I'm in just now and if I fly it into this star module malfunction. then I'll restart with exactly a thousand credits. Eject. Ship destroyed. When you start out in the game, selling modules doesn't get you any credits, so I'll just put things into storage when I upgrade them. Otherwise, I'd end up with extra credits. Start time is 49 minutes past midnight, and I'm going to do this all in one sitting just to demonstrate it really doesn't take as long as you might think. So the very first thing is to head over here to Outfitting and down to Optional Internal and just get rid of your planetary vehicle hanger. All that's doing just now is taking up valuable space. Now one of the ways to make money in this game is by trading commodities. So if we head up to the commodities market, just here, and there you can see you can buy all sorts of things like chemicals, explosives, hydrogen, liquid oxygen, or industrial materials, polymers, superconductors, metals, aluminium, copper, gold. The column in the middle of the screen there is the profit if you sell at the galactic average. If it's got a red thing next to it, you probably make a loss. Green, you probably make a profit. And there you can see bio waste at 36 credits per unit with a potential profit of 310 per unit. Cargo hold at maximum capacity. So that's the slow way, but much better is if you go up here to mission board. It just takes a few moments to open. Okay, now first of all go up to the top left and change the filter from All to Transport. And I'm also going to go over here and change this filter to Credits, just so at a glance how much each mission is worth. At the moment you want to ignore the Source and Return missions and the Deliver however many units of whichever commodity missions. You just don't have the cargo space in a Sidewinder for most of these. Each faction in the left hand window, they offer their own missions, but this is what we're looking for. Courier job available, 31,000 for that, accept that. Again, accept this next one, and check the next faction, just delivery missions. And here we go, another courier job. Ignore this one though, that's a planetary landing one. There's nothing wrong with those missions, they just take a little bit longer, and I'm trying to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. I'm just going through all the factions here, picking up all the courier jobs that I can find. Sometimes they're called sensitive data delivery missions, but that's basically the same thing. Now, if I'd been paying attention when I was picking up those missions, I would already know which one was closest to me. That's the first one to go for. But we can find out here on the left window in the transactions tab, it's got all the information for the mission. And if we go to open galaxy map, they're about one 17 light years away. The next one is... 17.2 away and we just go through next one is 10.4 and this one is 17.7 you just repeat that until you find the one that's nearest i think the one that was 10 light years away is probably the one that we want to go for 10.4 will do nicely and we go into the system map and once that loads We'll have a map of the system. There we go. Our destination is indicated by that blue icon. So we just plot route and then come back out of the system map and back out of the galaxy map. And then we just go over here and hit auto launch. And as long as you didn't get rid of your automated docking computer, the rest of this all happens automatically until you're outside the station. Landing gear retracted. Detachment complete. You are go for departure. Of course you can deactivate the docking computer or just hit the throttle at any point to override the docking computer. Incoming mission, critical message. This is the time in the game to experiment with things because you've not really got anything to lose. And now we just line up with our target destination indicated by the yellow circle. Frame shift drive charging. And once you're more than five kilometers away from the station, you just hit your jump button. Critical 
message. Now there's another thing you should be doing here after every jump, and that's using your discovery scanner to scan the system that you've just got to. This is basically free credits, and I'll show you how to collect those later in the video. With that done, we just jump to the next system on our route. Frame shift drive charging. And watch out for this. Velocity is zero and temperature is increasing because the hyperspace dethrottle set the speed to zero. You do get a reminder here. Ready to engage. But if you wait for that reminder. Four, three, two, one, engage. Warning, taking heat damage. Then you do run the risk of damaging your ship through overheating. Repairs mean lost credits, so you want to avoid that where possible. Anyway, there was no disaster this time, we've survived that. If we go to the left hand window and click on the filters, we can set that just for stations. That's our target, that's how you activate Super Cruise Assist. That'll take us all the way in and drop us out of Super Cruise when we get to the station. And here we are. Now we need permission to dock. To get that we go to the left window again, move over to the contact tab, wait till you're within seven and a half kilometers of the station, then hit the button. Docking request granted. Set your throttle to zero and then the computer will take over for the rest of it. Landing gear deployed. The computer just flies straight down at the pad and then flips at the last second. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. Click the droplet to refuel your ship. And now we'll head into the commodities market just to see what price they're offering for bio waste here. All the way down. Oh, not quite all the way. And you can see there that's a profit of 8 credits per unit, 16 credits in total. Hardly worth doing. And then we'll go into the mission board and hand in this courier job mission. And there you go, 28,000. Incoming message. And with that one done, we just head over here to the transactions tab of the left panel and find another mission. Same process, just go through them all till you find the closest one. And then system map once you've got it. Move over to the station, plot a route, and then come back out the map and hit launch. Landing gear retracted. Ship released. Engines engaged. And off we go to the Three, next system. Two, one, engaged. This isn't the target system, so up to the yellow circle and hit jump again. Two, one, engaged. Just realised I forgot to use my discovery scanner. So this time when I'm manoeuvring to line up with my next system, I'm also holding down the discovery scanner button. And that's defined in the right hand panel under fire groups. Exactly the same routine again. Discovery scanner, line up, hit jump. Now this isn't our destination system yet, but I can see that fuel's running quite low. That's where we would head, but what I'm gonna do is plot a course to one of the stations in this system just to pick up more fuel. I've probably left that a little bit late to start looking for fuel and to be honest I'm lucky that there's a station here. Now if we just have a look at the fuel gauge you've got the dashed line that's how much is in your tank and then a thin line at the top is how much is in the actual engine. So I do have enough for another jump but I've taken a risk there. I can see I've picked up a message in the comms panel and that contact will appear down here as well. That's a bad guy that's looking for the data I'm carrying, there's a chance they'll try and pull me out of Super Cruise. Here we go, as it says up top right, interdiction detected. This is basically a mini game where you just have to keep your crosshairs inside that blue circle, your escape vector, and that'll build up the blue bar on the side. If the red bar gets all the way to the top, they pull you out of Super Cruise and then they can attack you. But you remain completely safe while you're at Super Cruise speeds. And there we go, blue bar all the way to the top, all good. But unusually, there's another one straight away, and I've not got time to react. Warning. Temperature. Power in 
integrity compromised. And when a target on the radar is represented by a triangle, that means their hard points are deployed. Under attack. The shields are taking quite a battering here, as you can see. I've already lost one ring and they're going down quickly. And I haven't got the option of running away because the frameshift drive has to cool down before I can engage it again. So my best tactic here is to maintain distance because weapon damage falls off the further away you are. While I still had my shields, I was able to just fly in a straight line and try and go as quick as possible, but now they're gone, it's absolutely essential I don't get hit because Sidewinder doesn't take many hits to destroy. Fortunately, those green dots there are the police, so they'll be giving that pirate a little bit frame of hassle. Shift drive charging. And the frame shift drive back online, so I just need to avoid getting hit for a few more seconds, just keep ducking and weaving, try and be unpredictable. It looks like the police are engaging him. I'm not seeing so much fire headed my way now. And we've made it. In my experience, I'd say that that's quite unusual to get two interdiction attempts that close together. Depending what you're carrying, normally it's just one at a time. Shields online. So the shields are back online now, but I think that's probably the first thing I'm going to upgrade. We'll see if this station up here has got any shields I can buy. Exactly the same procedure for docking. To the sea, Sierra Alpha Alpha. We've prepared a landing pad for your arrival, Commander. Welcome to our station. Throttle to zero, let the docking computer do the rest. Scan detected. If you're ever doing a smuggling mission, those scans aren't done by the station itself. They're done by ships flying around outside it, so it's the ships you need to avoid. Landing complete. Dispatching ground crew. Welcome, Commander. And then I'm going to go over to outfitting because hopefully this station, not all of them do, but hopefully this station is one of the ones that will be able to offer me an improved shield generator, just down into optional internals, browse shop, and down to shield generators, and let's see what they've got. Just a quick explanation, the number is the size of the module, and the letter is how good the module is, ranging from E all the way up to A. D-rated modules are the lightest, B-rated have the most integrity, as in it will take the longest for the module to fail. But I'm going to go with a standard 2C shield generator, because that's the best I can afford. Next priority would be to increase the jump range. So that's the frame shift drive in core internals. There's a 2C drive. That means less hops per journey, which means less time. And might as well upgrade my cargo capacity as well. I can take two at the moment, so we'll pop in here and buy a four ton cargo rack and down here I'm putting another two ton cargo rack that means I can carry a whole eight tons of cargo and then just a quick visit to the commodities market just to fill those cargo racks and we'll see how much amazing profit we can get from trading I think the commodity to go with is tobacco but I can't afford six tons and if I go for five I don't leave myself many credits because you never want to fly without having enough credits to cover your rebuy cost. At the moment, mine is 2,546. If you manage to get yourself blown up and you don't have enough credits to cover that rebuy cost, then you're just back to square one in a bog standard sidewinder, and there's probably going to be some crying involved. But I don't have to worry about that. I've got enough credits to cover that eventuality. It's probably not going to happen, but uh, you never know. Right, enough of that. We've got toughened shields, we've got an improved jump range, and, uh, yeah. Ship released. Restrict speed until clear of the station perimeter. Let's crack on with these data delivery missions. Just a little point here for any new commanders that have recently bought weapons and are itching to try them out. Don't do that near the station, they don't like that and you will get a fine. Frame shift drive charging. And thanks to our new frame shift drive, it's only one jump to the next system this time. And on the way there we've encountered another interdiction attempt. Lots of people wanting the data that we're carrying. But you just keep aiming for that blue circle, keep it in your sights. If you can predict where it's about to go and stay ahead of it, it doesn't move as violently, this goes much more easily. But there, the blue bar is building up quite nicely. 
Just keep chasing it down, chasing it down. Don't give up on it, keep going after it. And there we go. And you just resume course and no problem. And then this is all just exactly the same routine every time. Approach the station, get within seven and a half kilometers, request docking, set your throttle to zero, and then let the computer fly it for you. Just a word of warning though, don't get complacent because the docking computer isn't infallible. It's capable of making mistakes and flying into objects and worst case scenario, causing your ship to blow up. So always be ready to take over, hit reverse thrust. Once you've resolved the problem, you can put the thrust back to zero and the computer will carry on just fine normally. Try and make it habit that every time you land, you refuel. And with that done, we'll head off to the mission board. And there's another 52,000 credits. Incoming message. Now I'm going to head back over to outfitting. This time I'm not really looking to upgrade any of the modules, but if I manage to find derated versions of some of the modules I've got, that will also increase my jump range. So let's have a look. Life support, eh, no point getting them. Power distributor, there we go, derated. So if we fit that, that's increased the jump range. And power plant, again, we'll fit that. Jump range goes up again. No stock for thrusters, sensors, and derated sensors. So our jump range is now up by about another half a light year. I'm also going to go into utility mounts. And what I'm looking for here is a chaff launcher. This is defensive in case we end up in a situation of getting fired at again. That makes it hard for the enemy to get a weapons lock. And for the same reason, I'm going to fit electronic countermeasures, because again, if they can't hit us, they can't do any damage. And then I'm going to go into hard points just to laugh at the idea of trying to fire back when you're in a sidewinder. Now over to the right hand panel and the fire groups tab, this is where you set up your discovery scanner. Uh, on a separate fire group, I'm also going to put in my chaff launcher and ECM hopefully never need to use them. Now back into outfitting, because I just realized we're not using one of these cargo racks. And to eliminate the risk of running out of fuel, it'd be quite good to put in a fuel tank, which I'm doing here. And then remember, when you fit a fuel tank, you have to actually go and put fuel in it. There we go. It just became far less likely that we'll run out of fuel. And then back to the process of looking for the next closest mission destination. That's it plotted. We hit auto launch and let the computer take us out of the station again. So just a couple of jumps to the next station. As one, avoid the star. Use your discovery scanner. Next jump. That's two. Again, avoid the star. Use your discovery scanner. Remember, we're going to sell this exploration data for actual credits. And because I didn't have a system map when I plotted this route, I need to go here in my left panel. The mission target's highlighted in blue. I'm just set that as a destination and point towards that. I am using Super Cruise Assist mode at the moment, but you're quicker not to because Super Cruise Assist only uses 75% throttle. Same routine as ever for docking at the station. Get within seven and a half kilometers down to your left panel, move to the contact tab, and then just request docking. And hopefully by now it's a habit that you've refueled. We'll head down to Starport Services and over to the mission board. Landing successful. Ship secured. Now we'll see how much we're going to get this time. And that's another 36,000 credits. Thank you very much. And since we're here anyway, we might as well head over to the commodities market just to see what prices they're going to offer us for our tobacco and bio waste. Well, they don't buy tobacco, 
and the bio waste would be a 22 credit loss per ton. So it doesn't make any sense to sell here, but if we're heading to outfitting again, it's always good to have a look at what modules. Uh, not every station sells the same modules. I don't know if you noticed earlier that they sold the shield generators. They sold everything except two B shield generators. Uh, here we go, two D thrusters. That increases our jump range. Only by a little bit, but it all counts. Now, to sell this exploration data, we go down here to Universal Cartographics and wait for that to load. And there we go, we've got one we can sell. You need to be more than 20 light years from the place you acquired the data. And I haven't been scanning every system. As you can see, I only scanned four systems, but that was worth 17,000 credits just for holding down the secondary fire button. And then it's the rinse repeat, so find the next nearest mission. And then auto launch once you've plotted the route to that. Wait for the computer to take you out into space. Line up with the target and hit jump. And just repeat the process. Hold down your discovery scanner button like I'm not doing here. Line up with the target and hit jump. Exactly the same process again. Discovery scanner, increase throttle, line up with target. Uh, by the way, if you remove your Super Cruise Assist module, then it, it won't automatically dethrottle or slow you down at the end of each jump. But then you do run the risk of accidentally getting too close to the star and taking heat damage. And here's another interdiction attempt. As before, you just play the mini game of trying to chase down that blue circle. If you do find yourself in a situation where this isn't going well and the bad guy's winning, you can preempt it by instead of being pulled out of Super Cruise, you knock your speed down to zero. What that does is it reduces the cooldown time for your frameshift drive and lets you jump back up into Super Cruise more quickly. But no problem here, that's them defeated and we'll just continue on our journey. And it's the same familiar drill when we arrive at the station, get to within seven and a half kilometers, request docking, reduce throttle to zero, and sit back and let the computer do the work. I've been playing for just over an hour now, and we've probably already got enough credits to upgrade the ship to a hauler or an adder. There's another 31,000 credits. Incoming message. And we should also check the commodities market because this station might buy tobacco. Let's have a look. There we go. And that is nearly 4,000 credit profit. So that was almost worth doing. This ship is now good enough as it is to complete the rest of the data delivery missions. But I think I would like to replace this cargo rack with a fuel scoop. That will allow me to collect hydrogen from stars. Hydrogen is what the ship uses to power the frameshift drive. There are seven types of stars that you can scoop from. They are K, G, B, F, O, A and M. So just going through the usual process of finding the next nearest mission target and then we can launch and thanks to our increased jump range the next station is just in the next system over so only one jump required this time incoming mission critical message easy as that and you know what to do here by now Disengaged. And then again, we head into the mission board, hand in the mission 36,000, over to outfitting after that. And let's see if we can upgrade the frameshift drive. We've got plenty of credits now. There we go, 2A frameshift drive. Our range is now up to about 18 light years. Quite an improvement. That's double what it was to start with. I'm also going to get rid of my Super Cruise Assist module because I don't need it. I'm just going to put a fuel tank on there, further decreasing the risk of ever running out of fuel. And then we'll just pick one of the four remaining courier jobs. Engines engaged. 
And off we go again. And try not to forget to use your discovery scanner, it's free credits. Target system reached. You just go down to your left panel here and set destination on the highlighted blue station and then just fly to it. If you look up, you can see that planet has a base on it. It is a lot of fun getting good at planetary landings, but for now, we're just concentrating on how do you make the most credits the most quickly with the least hassle. Engines and in my opinion, there isn't really an easier way than getting paid 33,000 credits for flying from one station to another when you're this early in the game anyway. Again, I'm just plotting a course to the next nearest delivery destination. Let's also go down to Universal Cartographics again just to see if we can sell any more of this exploration data. There's another 12,000. That'll do nicely. And away we go. Engines Just a few more short jumps and I'll have completed these missions. You may remember that I removed my Super Cruise Assist module and uh, cautioned that sometimes that can mean you accidentally fly into a star. Normally there's no cause for panic, here's what you do. First priority is to put the star behind you because obviously you want to be flying in a straight line directly away from it. In ships with good visibility, I find just looking extreme left and right is a good way to just get it just into your view and then you know it's behind you. Increase your speed to maximum, but don't boost. Boosting increases your heat. If your temperature is already near 100% just when you're stopped, you can bring it down by switching off some of these modules. But you're going to need your thrusters and your frame shift drive, so don't switch them off and I would probably keep your shields running too. Then once you've done all that, just press your super cruise button. Frame shift drive charging. And cross your fingers. You can see there that there's an escape vector. That's why we put the star directly behind Three, us. Two, one, engage. Warning, temperature critical. Warning, taking heat damage. Now the temperature of your ship is going to increase before it goes down. That's quite normal. Seeing plenty of smoke there. But you'll probably be okay, even if it gets up to 200%, you probably won't blow up. Probably. Also, please be aware that you might have to go into settings to define a button for jumping into Super Cruise when there isn't a target. And that's how you do that. Frame shift drive charging. At least I remembered to use the discovery scanner this time. There's a tip I have to help you avoid flying into the exclusion zone of stars. Incoming mission. Critical message. If you find that you're making a habit of getting too close to stars, you can go to your right panel, the ship tab, and down to pilot preferences, and switch on orbit lines. I'll just target our destination station. And now when I align with the target, you'll be able to see that the orbits are now represented by lines on the screen. This also puts a green circle around stars, which indicates the exclusion zone, which you have to stay outside of. So that's it without. And with. Some people don't like that, they think it's a bit cluttered, but that's probably better than flying into stars. So use it if you think it's helpful, and if not, don't. Landing gear deployed. Now there is the option to repair here just by clicking on the wrench, same as you click on the droplet for fuel, but we'll head into Starport Services and we'll go down to the bottom right, Advanced Maintenance, and this gives a more detailed breakdown of the damage. Some things like life support only cost a credit to fix, other things more expensive like your frameshift drive. At the top you've got two buttons, Repair All, which does what it sounds like, then Ship Integrity. If you get in a fight and your ship integrity is low, then your hull won't last as long and your modules will malfunction more quickly. It's time to hand in the data for this mission. There we go, 96,000 credits. And a quick stop off at the commodities market to see if I can get rid of this bio waste that I've been carrying around. There we go, a mighty 8 credits profit.
and another quick visit to outfitting just to upgrade some modules just because we can it's worth noting here that you can sell modules for exactly the same price as you buy them for so you don't lose credits here you only lose credits when you buy and sell ships okay now i've done those completely pointless upgrades to my ship it's uh, back to deciding where the next data delivery destination will be and then we'll just do the quick, quick, quick version of the journey. Incoming mission, critical message. Now all of these incoming mission critical messages, they're normally just this, either a delivery bonus for delivering within a certain amount of time, or they're a warning that enemy ships have been sent against you. Delivery bonuses are a reward for delivering faster, but it doesn't affect the original mission if you just completely ignore the bonuses. Docking request granted. And the incoming enemy alerts offer you bonus credits if you can take out the enemy. But again, as with the delivery bonuses, it's completely optional. The original mission that you agreed to is not affected by whether or not you take out the enemy. It's just bonus credits on offer. That's all it is. So we'll just land here and collect the credits. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. For our second last mission, and that's 52,000 credits. And then... Uh, on to the next one. So it's only 6.68 light years away, that would just be one hop even for a stock Sidewinder. Jensen Horizons is our target. And then all we've got to do is fly their hand in this last mission and see how many credits we've made. very close to the end of this video now but there's still a couple of things there's the line around the star showing the exclusion zone to avoid and this is the other thing fuel scooping, fuel scooping. normally you have to fly around the star fuel scooping complete. but uh, we hadn't used much fuel and it's quite a big fuel scoop and there's our target Jensen Horizons between us and the station was this lovely ringed planet it's a planet with rings, and I'm sure it's lovely. But all I care about is credits here, so let's get to the station. The approach procedure doesn't really change from station to station, just keep doing what you've been doing. This station is very dark because the sun's on the other side of it. That's just made me think of something you need to know if you land on a planet at night time. There's actually night vision here, which you can activate by doing that. And it puts green lines over everything. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. And off to the mission board again. And we're getting 41,000 for this. Now that's all those missions handed in, but for completeness, I want to go back to the station that I started this video at. So that's AY Indy, 17 light years away. That's one jump, I believe. And I deliberately chose to start my video down here at Farkas Dock because I know there's a good chance that that's one of the places a new player might end up at. You are approved for automated docking. This is it, both the start and the end of the video. I suppose it's the end of the video because it's the end of the video, but it started. Scan detected. One thing's for sure, this is almost definitely going to be the last time I fly a Sidewinder. I'm impatient, so I'm going to have a glance at the credits Landing already. I'm seeing more than 200,000 there, and I know I've got a lot of value in the modules in this ship, so we should have plenty to play with. Time check, 2.35, so that's just over an hour and three quarters. And before you buy your new ship, go in and sell all the modules out of it.
if you've done this the way I've done it, then you've got a few hundred thousand tied up in the value of the modules on your ship. So it's not just your balance when you get to the last station. As you notice there, I've got 693,851 credits for less than two hours play. And that's just with a standard Sidewinder. But no more Sidewinder. I can now upgrade to a Cobra Mark III. Much more cargo space, bigger jump range, better shields, bigger potential module size, more potential for making credits. Well, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Watch the other videos on my channel. And until next time, fly safe.